Okay, so what we're gonna to try to do today is to do a little demo into how I uh, build my most recent drawings and paintings. Um, I've been asked to put together a video like this, uh, uh, foremost by uh, um, Miss uh, Marilyn Lynch, my aunt, and uh, also just, just sort of always interested in sharing a little bit of what I do. Um, I share some of this stuff with my painting students in class. I share some of this stuff with my friends when we hang out and make art together. Uh, but this is uh, just sort of a walkthrough of how I make the most recent pictures that I've been making. And, and so I'm going to share, share with you what they look like just because I think that that's sort of helpful. Um, I've been posting this stuff on Facebook. I've been posting my art on Facebook. I used to make a whole lot of crazy collages. Uh, most of those are up there and they've been up there for a while. Um, of course, I love making photography photos. I've, I've, most of this stuff was shot in, uh, um, in France back through the couple of years back. Of course, a uh, bunch more sort of paintings on top of collages, stuff like that, which is something I enjoy doing. Of course, plenty of photos of me and my little guy. Um, but basically, uh, last year was the first year that I did the Inktober thing. And of course, that's, that's a different sort of task than just making art and posting it whenever you make it. It's the idea, of course, is to post every single day. And that adds a lot of work because, of course, some days you're in the mood to draw and some days you're not. But the idea, I think, is to sort of force you into the mood a little bit, sort of make you um, do things that you might not otherwise do. And I think that that's generally a pretty positive, powerful uh, thing. So many of these pictures that you're seeing here are from last year's Inktober. Now, at the beginning of this year, um, we basically jumped in and um, the first handful of these drawings um, I created with my friend, uh, John Gutierrez. He teaches drawing here at St. Xavier University. And uh, um, we just, enjoy sitting around drinking beer and drawing and so that's where these things came from and there was there was a um, quite a bit of fun in creating those and they uh, um, I don't know some people enjoyed them so then I we, I probably made about 10 15 of those I put my favorite ones up there and then immediately started making some new messes like this right and then turn that into this and you can see basically my inktober approach is to draw on top of paintings and so these paintings were pretty straightforward and pretty easy to make. And then of course, like, as you can see, all of the paintings have a few things in common. First of all, they all have the same color background. And that background comes from um, working on uh, this, just these envelopes, right? So this is just, uh, uh, just a little, I don't know, whatever this is, uh, looks like about like four by six or something like that, you know, four by seven, five by seven, something like that uh, envelope. And um, I've been working on these. I've actually been painting on envelopes quite a bit over the years just because they're kind of fun. They're kind of simple. They're objects. They're objects that you could put stuff in and that's kind of interesting. Um, the fun thing about doing them that, this way this year is that uh, now if somebody likes one of them, you can just sort of, you know, send them off to them, right? Just put an address on the other side and send it off to them. But of course, the other thing that's fun about these paintings being on envelopes is that you could take another artwork and stuff that inside of this artwork and now you're sending them two artworks and that's kind of fun too. Um, but of course, inside of this artwork, you could also put an additional artwork and that would be super fun. Now you can put a painting inside of a painting inside of a painting, send that off to somebody. So that's one of the reasons that I've been enjoying uh, working on these envelopes. And, and of course, also because they don't really matter. They're kind of disposable. You know, every once in a while I'll make one that I really like, and I, I really like this particular picture, um, but I probably wouldn't have made this if it was all about trying to decide if it was going to go on one of these important canvases or just be something sort of disposable and throw it. If I like it, scan it, print it big if I want to. It sort of functions like one of these sketchbooks, you know? And these sketchbooks have always been an important part of my creative process. I just work in them every day, kind of like the Inktober thing, except if I skip a week, nobody knows the difference. I can sort of, you know, record ideas and recipes as well as, uh, um, you know, scribbles and drawings. And I can come back to the same drawing two or three years later and that's fine. Um, but I've been doing these for years. It's only recently that I started doing the October thing and only recently, recently doing it on these envelopes. So uh, um, I'll show you just a few more of the ones that came out of this year, just because I'm going to sort of talk about how I built this particular style. Uh, or this particular background. Um, it, it sort of works with this approach that I really like, which is called, uh, which is basically a set of instructions for making artwork. Actually, I really sort of see it as a set of instructions for starting an artwork, right? Um, this is just a mess. And by the time I do this to it, I've kind of cleaned it up. I've resolved the mess. I've solved 
the puzzle, right? And I think that that is really pretty important. So I really believe that a really valuable approach to art making is to just make a mess and then clean it up, right? Like, don't worry too much about what you're going to do before you start. Just, uh, um, you know, you're going to end up with all of this sort of stuff if you just, you know, make a mess. And so that's normally where I start a lot of my artworks is I start just by making awesome messes and then figure out how to clean them up. So I've created lots and lots and lots of strategies. I've not created any of these. I've, I've, I've collected these strategies for making messes. And I'm just going to share a couple of them with you just so that you can sort of see how I do it. A lot of them come from one really simple approach, which could, I guess, really be qualified less as painting and more as printmaking. And that is that, see this one here and this one here. Um, see how they both have this blue and they both have this white and this dark blue. Obviously, they were all made using the same colors. But also, see how there's sort of blue up in this corner and there's sort of blue up in this corner? That's partly because these were probably sandwiched together and when they were pulled apart, um, then there was a little bit of paint left on both of them. That's probably one of the most common strategies. And that's, that's probably what I did the most on that last set. And so that's probably the first simple approach that I might sort of take. So you come over here and uh, I normally start by setting up a, a big, space to work so that I can, uh, as I peel off each individual print, I've got somewhere that I can throw it. Uh, I normally um, have a few other pieces uh, put into place just in case I want to mess with it a little bit in the process. So uh, essentially what I'll probably start by doing is uh, just sort of spreading a few of these out just so that I know where they are when I need them. And uh, since I have plenty of them spread out, I can just start doing exactly that, making that mess. And as soon as I have some mess on all of them, sort of roughly decide how many I want to mess with. Um, this also plays with the strategy that I have, which is I try to avoid ever making one artwork at a time. Part of the reason for that is that I, I'm, I'm less likely to care how it turns out, and therefore I'm less likely to sort of stress over whether I'm doing it right. I'm less likely to sort of, um, I guess, sort of worry about it. I'm more likely to sort of be spontaneous. I like the result of more spontaneous art myself. Four, six, eight, ten, four, fourteen. I guess I've got about 15, 16 days left in the month. I want to make sure I've got plenty of extra ones in case I screw up so that I can screw up so that I will screw up. And so I'll lay a few of those out. All right. So um, step number one here, once I've got a nice uh, spread here, is just to make a few decisions about color. Um, the last set was, uh, uh, the first set was green. So I just basically ended up make, working with green. The second set ended up being a lot more blue and white. By the time I was done, it ended up being red. So I guess I've kind of run through the colors. I've done some blue, some white, some red. And of course, yellow and yellow is not going to do much for me. So I guess I could pretty much do anything. I haven't started with red yet. So I'm just going to sort of come out here and just get some nice red right on there and just get the ball rolling, right? Now, of course, I can do lots of things with this red. I can try to brush it around or something like that. But this is one of my favorite things to do, right? I'm just going to uh, turn it over. And I'm just going to squish a little bit on each of these and just basically begin the process of, you know, uh, duplication. I'm sort of stamping back here with some of this original stuff, go a little bit wider, sort of making Rorschach uh, ink blots. And each one's gonna be different, but each one's gonna have a little bit of the evidence of the previous one on it. And I'm just gonna sort of begin that. I wanna get it so that all this paint is sort of similar uh, but definitely is unique. Um, one of the things I really like about this is that you end up with this sort of, see it's almost like a, a, a web pattern or something that comes from this uh, when you do it. And then the more you smash it, the more you flatten that web pattern out there. Like, like it's a sort of spider web pattern of some sort. So, so yeah, so you get the ball rolling, just sort of, you have to start somewhere. So as soon as you start, then you sort of grab it and you sort of say, what can I do to make it a little bit different? Well, I'll just sort of apply the paint a little bit different. And instead of, uh, I don't want it to be the same, so I'm going to sort of apply it a little bit different on each one, right? And, and it's also okay if I don't get it on all of them, because I don't actually need them all to be directly related. So you know, we got some on there, and I can move over there, move over there. Of course, I can grab any one of these. Smash it down on there if I want to. It's kind of like just playing. What do I want to do? Where do I want to put it? Put it anywhere. Put some of it over there, right? Put some of this one, put it over there. Now, as soon as they're together like this, I've got two ways to take them apart, right? 
if I just peel them apart, I sort of get sort of a mirror, right? Uh, if instead I sort of smear them apart, put it down flat, and sort of really almost smear it off like that, I get a very different result. So that's another fun thing that you get to decide. How much, how careful are you going to be about it? How, you know, controlled do you want to be about it? How much do you want to just sort of take what you get? Um, I like to do a little bit of both. I don't like to be too bossy, but I also don't. I, I, I like to get a variety of results. So one thing that I have to think of is that ultimately I'm going to be putting, I, I, the final step, at least for the last couple, I've been working with black ink, so I don't want black to be the dominant color. I can't get a lot out of yellow, but I could play with yellow a little bit right about now in that I don't really have, and add a little yellow and add a little squirt of white. All right. There we go. And the ones that have less, maybe I try to hit those first next time. And even right now, I'm going to be picking up both black and yellow and white and moving it around, right? Flip this up, jump on there. Flip up and come for that one. And it doesn't. The more it matters, the more likely I'm going to sort of think too much about it. And I think at this point, especially when you're making a mess, you can't really over analyze a mess or it's just going to be stupid. I like it to sort of be fun. So I like to just sort of let it be what it's going to be. I'm getting some interesting results here. Um, feels like I'm definitely getting a lot of repetition, a lot of com common uh, marks. I'm going to flip a few of them upside down so that I can reverse them. And now it feels like we've got a lot of sort of consistency here. So I kind of, I think, want to move towards a little bit of variability. And that is, um, I'm going to sort of do one thing that's kind of fun, which is I'm going to sort of make a block. I'm going to sort of pull these together and make them uh, sort of a block. And then start treating them like a group for a second. And then I can come back and mess with them again separately later. And what I can do as soon as I do that is to just sort of put a piece of paper down there sideways, something like that. And now uh, I'm going to come through and let me see here, I think white. And I'm just going to sort of run down the side of it with a smear there. And then as soon as I need some more here, I'm just going to do the same thing here. And I'm just going to sort of take away some of the perfectness of everything for a minute. Right? Now, the fun thing is that now I've got this sort of nice long straight line over here, which is kind of cool. It's creating something that's going to be very different. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to sort of grab a hold of a Yellow, I think. Maybe this yellow. It's just going to be smeared across there. Right, something like that. And now I can I set these up as a block over here. Now I can do the opposite side of this. You get like a print. Now I'm definitely getting very, very, very mixed results. Things are starting to look more and more different from one another. Yep. What I want to do is now take all of this yellow here, which I've got this nice line already going, flip it upside down, and apply it over here somewhere. All right, spread that out. Now I'll put down the opposite of that yellow line there. That's good. So now by treating it as a sort of big canvas, I'm, I'm basically enhancing the amount of differences that we have instead of the amount of similarities that we have. And again, the more that I shuffle them around, the more I'm going to get maximum variability. So I think I'm going to keep this to black white. I'm going to keep blue out of this. I'm afraid that if I have blue, it's going to look like, you know, sort of shit rainbow sort of thing. And I want to keep it kind of simple. So I think I'm just going to keep pushing the reds, whites, and yellows. But I think that yellow is the next one that I want to. And I think maybe just back and forth between white and yellow. Yeah, that's good. So weird shape, it's going to create a weird print. First I'll drop down a print there, a print there, and a print here. I'm going to put a smear. Boom. Kind of like where when I use the corners, I don't know. I kind of like the fact that it adds a weird dimension to it. All right, so I'm definitely going to have very different ones. 
you know, if anything, it's, they're starting to sort of become pretty significantly different. And I want to sort of start to maybe go back to playing with them and try to make them similar again. And so now, and sort of go back to doing sandwiches. And, and if I do sort of a, a unique gesture on a few in a row, sort of create pairs, right? Like, let's see what I've done here in a second. Okay. Feel those, so now those are sort of like a pair. Those are sort of like a pair, if you see what I mean. And so, um, the advantage to that is that, well, first of all, you may end up deciding later to merge them in some interesting way. And so take these two. So even though their backgrounds are very different, they become sort of a diptych of sorts. You know, take those two. So now those two are similar. Then if I take this one and put it over here, and take this one and put it over here, now we sort of duplicate the efforts. And now we sort of end up with four that have something. So now these four are kind of like a super team. And they're starting to get pretty interesting. These up here. Now again, depending on how you flip and how you flop, you could end up with a nice quadrate piece. Something that makes some sort of sense um, in a loop in two different ways. I'll show you what I mean. So here, I'm going to sort of hit one with the black and one with, the, uh, one with white. Sort of do a uh, something like that. And I'm going to take these two and switch them like this. Okay. And I unsquish that and I'm going to do this with red up here. Uh, we'll do it with yellow. Now we take this white and it's yellow, okay. And then, again, let me think here. Maybe I'll do one last little splash of red that goes across here. Okay, this goes over here. Okay. Now that these come down here, flop this way, these basically become sort of a team because they flop in that direction and in that direction they start to become sort of a a super canvas, right? So those are sort of working together in an interesting way. I'm sure they're the same here. Just by adding that yellow. I've already flopped these once. Yeah. Flop these. Okay. And then if I really want to mess with it, I can take these guys and flop them back up this way. So these are getting good and messy. Some of them, these ones down here are probably less messy. I'm gonna take these down, sort of start to integrate those in, but these are looking at good and messy. They're definitely starting to have character where they're, they're sort of like, okay, I think I recognize that you've got certain character traits that some of the other ones don't. Obviously, they've all got the red, white, and yellow, and the black has been pushed a little bit more to the back. This is sort of a, a more subtle group Let's talk about this group, because this group is kind of a troublemaker group. They're not quite cool yet, but they're not, they're certainly not bad. They're just kind of weird. This is starting to get interesting. Let me see if I can. And so, since I've sort of got this strong red, white, and yellow thing going, it almost seems as though it would be fair to try to break from that in some way, just a little bit, to sort of make a few bold moves, like say, I think a, a, a Either a strong, here. still feel like a little bit of red on these might be useful. The way that this looks like I'm describing. Okay. So, Right. Nice 
this mess. Yellow. So all of the, the green ones and all of the blue ones all started out in exactly this way. Just, you know, it was about creating the best mess possible. Now the other ones, I actually sort of, maybe I was a little less uh, all over. There was, there was more of the background still showing by the time I was done, but I think that's, that's okay. So what I've got here is that these ones are a little smearier than the rest of these. And I can't decide which I like better, but for the fact that these are a little more subtle, and these feel like they're a little more all over the place. And I think that the biggest difference is, is the amount of black and the amount that I sort of moved them. So I'm going to introduce just a little black. I'm going to do a little rub smear. Instead of just a sandwich, these are going to be a little smearier by the time I'm done. Okay. Now they're different, very different. Come back to here. Okay. Okay. And notice just that these deviate in one key little way that these first two, I think, kind of printed on the other side of what I followed. Okay. So I kind of like the results of that, um, although a little more white would be nice. So I'm going to sort of Let me take this last group here, do another little smear of black, just a little line that runs right along that edge, right? And I'm going to just start running that through the mirror machine here. Just introduce it to all of them first, and then I'll smear them around. You don't have to totally give it a full, full, full crazy smear. I want to still keep some of the texture. Black takes off really fast. The black is a really powerful device. It once it's in here, it starts to attack, right? It's getting super super. Okay, see, I'm getting these interesting fresh smears. Let me. I'm going to use a little bit before I take these too much further. I'm going to get these. You know, you don't really know when it's done until it's done. And you don't really know if you've gone too far until it's gone too far. And I don't really worry about it too much because I got plenty of stupid yellow envelopes. One last little bit of bonus, and these are on top, and now these feel a little too overly glossy or something. So, smear me, see we can figure out what works, and then apply it to all of them a little bit. What I like is that last smear of white on top of everything, you know what I mean? It basically where things suddenly became interesting to me. So, let's smear of white. Bring it in. There we are. So those are starting to work. And the other ones that are still a little bit over the top are these. There we go. Nice. Take this one right here. 
conditions. Now, these are starting to become. Now, it's, it's important to note that these are not paintings yet. Right now, these are just smeary prints. They're not really art. They're, I'm, I'm just running a craft. That's too good. That's too good. Too good. I'm just running a trick on them. And so, you know, we still have to sort of figure out what the composition will be. But these are suddenly all unique and similar. And then the question is, is do I want to do a final move or two that will be consistency or just let them be? I mean, there's advantage to just letting them be. I kind of like where they're at. I like where they're at, maybe I'm done. I'm done, but that's your tutorial, that's how you do it. Now, the next step, of course, is inking them. But you can't ink them until they get good and grimy and dirty like this. Now they're good and grimy and dirty, and I try to figure out now what's going to happen now. It's important to note, what was the final thing that I did on here? The final thing that I did was I went through and gave myself that bright white. It was, a, it was what needed to happen to make them feel done for me. Now, the reason that I'm saying that is that I know that my next step is to put black ink on it. If I don't have something that's going to contrast against that black ink, I really don't have anything to work with. If, if it was all kind of dark and dark red and dark black, there wouldn't be that much available for me to outline, you know what I mean? For me to ink, quote unquote. And so um, that's where I felt that they really sort of popped was as soon as that white got on there. They're all kind of cool. I mean, kind of cool finished paintings. You saw they're just slap, slappy, smeary, smeary, slappy sort of thing. But as soon as I go through and ink them, then they will sort of switch from being sort of, I don't know, something that's a little more, you know, abstract to something that'll be a little more concrete. Um, but but sort of keeping a little bit of the, the, the goodness of both of those elements as I do it. So now I've kind of got just one last thing I can play with here. I think I'll put it on these and put it on just another random straight envelope, right? I just took three colors, put it on this uh, card. It's just another envelope. And I'm going to sort of set that in place there. I'm put another one here that's going to sit on top. And I know I put way too much paint on there, so hopefully it bleeds out all the edges. And I may actually take the time to set it on the ground and actually step on it. Jump up and down on it a little bit. So that by the time I take these apart, it's going to sort of smear out. Here's just a kind of got a nice uh, thing that happened there. And I'm going to take that, make a sandwich. Okay. Take that sandwich, flip it upside down. Take that sandwich. And I'm starting to frame out a nice little arc. And then the whole thing starts over again. All right. Here, got a nice mixy blast smeary thing in the middle and I can put that the same one on another card, another card, another card, another card, just keep going. Um, but I like to use that particular trick a lot. You take like a nice clean empty envelope and put it on top of this big smeary mess that I just made and just make a mini mono print. Right? That's really what's going on here is that it's basically a mono print. Peel that print off slap it down on the next one here and again the process just keeps continuing passing the paint from one surface to another surface and back that's all we're really doing like i say it's it's probably more akin to printmaking really than this painting and i kind of like that and i could sit and make these smeary dumb little sandwiches all day long and each one of them is sort of like the beginning of another painting. And that's what I like about it. It's just sort of like, it's, it's just manufacturing little ideas all day long. Every single one of them could turn out to be an interesting painting. If I take the time, Woo! to actually convert it in there. All right, so part two will be inking. This is just part one.